Okay guys, straight into it. Now, this is a how-to video, how to make my little working trays that I use in my videos to store my stuff. Um, I use these on all different scales in my craft room. If you want to know, maybe I'll do a craft room tour one day. Now, in this video, I'm using the Art Glitter Glue because it's got a quick tack rate and it literally tacks really quickly as soon as you put it down, just for the ease of the video. It's way too expensive to do this with all of them. Um, now, I use silicon glue, which I told you in my last video. But, yeah, okay. So, moving on. Now, what we are doing, it doesn't matter. The measurements don't matter. The measurements are whatever size tray you need to create your storage solution. You know, you might want one tiny like this. You might want one longer, shorter, fatter, like whatever, deeper. So everyone's measurements will be their own. All the side, side measurements need to be the depth you want your tray. Um, and your base gives you your length and width of every side panel. That's it. That's all you need to know. Um, the reinforcing edges, I use... 12 by 12 sheets of paper, I cut them into one inch strips. So I get 12 inches long, one inch wide. Then I use my scoring tool. I score straight down the center and that gives me half an inch each side. And I glue it like this and it, I attach it to the bottom first because it's the easiest bit. And then I, I just burnish it on there that just makes sure that there's no air pockets in the glue. Um, so it gets good contact. And then I simply move on to the next one. Now, what I also do is... I do have to mention. So I put the pattern to the inside. These are patterns that I have purchased in a paper pad that don't really appeal to me. Um, in a scrapbooking sense. Nonetheless, I've paid for the papers, so I might as well get something out of them. Um, so what I do is turn them inside out, and that gives me a white one inch wide strip. Now, every time I do these, I always cut them slightly larger than the length or the width that I need. So it's always one inch wide, but I cut it slightly longer so I know with certainty that I'm going to have good glue contact on the very edge where the join is. That's just for extra support. Obviously, this tray, it's not so important because it's so tiny. Um, Excuse me, I just have to let my dogs out because my daughter's out of bed and they all want to go and annoy her. Okay, um, okay, so I'm just trimming down the edges and once I do that, sorry about the squeaking, now my, oh, you have no idea how many times I've tried to do this voiceover this morning. I have laryngitis still, I can barely talk and this is the fourth time I've done this voiceover. Oh, give me strength. Did you spot the boo-boo there? I still had my Teflon mat underneath me. Yes, I cut straight through it. Thankfully, later, the, the day I did this, later that day, I actually got two new ones. It's not ruined. It's just, I'll just put a bit of washi tape on the other side of it. She'll be right. Um, okay, so once I've done that, I've added my side. See how it's slightly longer? It's okay. You just trim that bit. Don't panic. You haven't done it wrong. It's just to trim that edge off so it's a little bit neater. I like all my edges to come to 
a neat corner. Um, it's not the end of the world if you don't do that. I also do my corner supports on the outside and on the inside. So what that's actually for, if you think about it, and this is sort of going in a bit of an engineering direction. Okay, so when you're creating your, your walls on your box, you want to make sure without making it chunky and without making it ugly, you need to have as many points of contact to these joins with the glue and the paper as possible. That will strengthen your box no end um, or your tray. This, this tray is obviously not going to house very heavy items, but some of my trays do. Some of my trays hold, I actually counted the other day, I've got 60 washi tapes in one tray. Now, you know, if you've got any washi tape, that actually adds up weight wise. So... I also have my edge punches, my border punches, all in one tray. Um, and that's what I did my last video on. There's actually a fair bit of weight in that. Um, but this one, obviously, you don't need to. But it, what I do with it, 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 the reason I make it this way is to give as much structural integrity to the tray or, or the storage item as physically possible. Best way I know to do that is with glue. Wet glue is better long-term than tape in this application purely because once it's adhered, it doesn't go anywhere. It's not budging. Whereas tape has a failure rate you know if you don't get all the air out from underneath it that air will eventually dry that bit of tape and over time will create a weak point in your tray or your you know your drawer that you've created or whatever um okay so then i go through i've got all the outside edges done all the inside edges done i then create a mat to go on the very bottom of your base so it looks pretty in all the videos every time I use it um, and then I go around there's no special science to this just the width of your corners that's how wide you cut the one inch strip I'm looking for I hid it underneath some paper I find it here in a second I knew I had an extra one cut where is it? Dun, dun, dun. There it is. Okay, so I cut these one inch strips. I just do them in one hit and then whenever I want to make a tray, there's some done. So you just cut it to the height of your tray, go around the inside and the outside with these and I always turn them inside out so it just gives me a crisp white edge. And this gives, again, you've now got not only your side edges inside now but you now have your joins in the so you're essentially one two three four so each join has four four times the connection with the glue so it's really well supported and strong like these really are strong um and it serves it serves me well and it looks pretty let's be honest who wants white plastic how boring we're crafters man let's create our own solutions so and i find this is much more environmentally friendly because it's not plastic i know we use a lot of plastic and i'm not going down a rabbit hole with that but it is a solution to a problem that i had Okay, so when I'm finished with my trays, so you can see there, there's a bit of a lip on it. I do that on purpose 
um, nine times out of ten I would prefer to have a little bit of overhang and then I just use my craft knife or for my American friends um, an exacto knife and I just run along the inside edge and just trim it off and then it's beautiful and it's all done not a problem then what I do with any of the trays that I have on display on my desk um, or any that I know that you guys are going to see on a video I run around the very edge with a very technical tool my fingers and I use this $2 Montmartre studio acrylic paint in titanium white it's like gesso it, it literally doesn't can't use it as gesso but it's as white and as opaque as gesso um, and I just run around the edges and then bazinga it's all done and it's pretty and I have a tray and it's that simple so I hope this video was a lot easier for you guys to follow and there you go that's it done like and subscribe for more tips and tricks and lots of scrapbooking fun thanks guys thanks for watching bye